Hello everyone, I'm Tommy O. This is Music with Purpose. And boy, what a night we have for you. Elliot Lewis, Miss D, and Greg on drums. Otherwise, we're just going to say Elliot Lewis in the house tonight. Thank you. guys thank you so much well to the interview portion of music with purpose Elliot uh, where do we begin Norwalk was the start mm -hmm. and w one instrument was the start but there were many before you ended up getting the album recognition and the recognition maybe from mm -hmm. uh, touring uh, national acts where did it start oh my god <laughs> Do we have enough time? <laughs> we'll make it. It started out with uh, two older brothers that introduced me to a lot of music growing up. 
My mom was a classical pianist. I had two older brothers that one was a guitar player, so I heard nonstop British invasion <laughs> growing up, everything from the blues to David Bowie. I took up the drums when I was 10, continued on that path for about five or six, seven years, and uh, realized that, you know, the whole business revolves around the song. So um, I transitioned from the drums to guitar. Uh, to bass to eventually keyboards to really to be a songwriter because because I realized I wanted to have a career uh, that was lasting and uh, become the best songwriter I could be a teenage decision it was a teenage decision actually. you're full of yeah. teens so. and it wasn't well like when I transitioned from the drums to guitar people thought I was a little bit crazy but uh, I wanted to be a songwriter sticks instead of picks or what did you <laughs> <use>? <laughs> but drums are still probably my favorite instrument to play there's nothing more fun than banging things. The physical aspect of it must have given yeah. you a rhythm that many guitar players would have uh, uh, well, envied. Well, drumming helped, I think, everything after that that I've done. It helped give me a sense of rhythm in all the other instruments that I, that I play. The spaces yeah. in between are much more important in a drum uh, as opposed to a melodic thing. Mm -hmm. But much like a, a young kid would study piano and get a, a melodic um, background. Right. Yours was in more of the rhythmic, it rhythmic was. but you can pick up, since you went to keyboards and you, you do have pitch and a melodic mm -hmm. uh, ability, but to have that solid rhythm foundation for many people, mm -hmm. uh, it, you didn't have to practice with, with a metronome, exactly. which yeah. is recommended for guitarists. <laughs> Some. <for sure. laughs> but you were the metronome. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So there's still not a um, uh, one instrument that, that is your driving well, I, drums know, are loved, but I still love playing the drums. I just don't get a chance to be a drummer and perform on the drums anymore. But it's the one instrument that's still a, sort of a staple in my career. I still play drums and record with them. Um, but again, I wanted to be a songwriter. I wanted to be a complete songwriter. I was going to say, how has it helped yeah. writing? Obviously, it gave you something, to, the clarity to want the mm -hmm. next level. Right. So I think I'm most comfortable performing uh, in front of people as a guitar player. I kind of relate to that instrument as my main instrument. Um, and it's, it's just sort of ironic that I sort of gained a little bit of uh, exposure being the keyboard player in Hall & Oates <coughs> and on Live from Daryl's House. It wasn't an instrument that I really set out to be a, a performer on. Uh, it was more to just be a complete songwriter. And I got into it at the time where technology was exploding in the 80s, so you could put together songs really uh, with the technology that the keyboards offered at the time. Press the button and the song, uh, yeah, the one key. Yeah, the sequencers and when right. computers started becoming more commonplace to use. Yeah. He laid the groundwork for some of us that do it on computer, or some kids that can do it on computer now. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was it M-I-D-I? Uh, yeah. It was oh, not yeah. a skirt length <laughs> at one time in the 80s. MIDI and sampling, I was really, really deep into that. Oh. Yeah, we're talking about the 80s, and, you know, I really dove into the technology part of that very, very strongly. And, um, and it served me well because I ended up um, crossing paths with uh, an amazing uh, musician and producer, Dan Hartman, who wrote uh, Free Ride and I Can Dream About You, and he produced a ton of people. Edgar Winter Band. Edgar yes, Winter Band, uh, exactly. Did he produce for them? Or he, I think he did. He certainly wrote with Edgar Winter, yeah. But he was a real huge influence on me that he took me under his wing when I had no track record, and he was using some of the... You know, the A-list musicians in New York. And uh, for some reason, he took me under his wing and, and had me play on a bunch of his records that he was producing. So uh, I was on a big Tina Turner hit and Joe Cocker and Pointer Sisters. Some and credits. And exactly. <laughs> Learning the MIDI thing and at that point really served me well. It, it opened some doors, for sure. In the beginning of, the, uh, of, of that technology, yeah. anyone who had a, a, a foothold on it was a go-to guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, studios and writer producers. Yep. So exactly, it, it made made good sense. I did a little bit for on the guitarist. Well, in the '80s, you had okay. to know a bit, yep. even as a guitarist. Mm -hmm. uh, Not everybody did, but I really embraced the technology, and I still utilize it. And um, you know, you can. There are people that are coming into it. You know, the younger generation that are coming into it now. That that's all they know. They don't really know the the uh, the the experience that we had just playing instruments. They kind of came into it with the technology already available. Or I teaching had the instruments to be 
uh, telling yeah. them what to play. Exactly. That's the, the tedious part of the, the, of the early uh, yeah. sequencing and controlling. You know, and there's no right or wrong. People still make great music now. We made great music back then. It's, uh, it's just coming from a different place. Just like kids used Polaroids a few decades mm -hmm. ago, they're using a, a cell phone now. Absolutely. Uh, Technology moves forward and we embrace it or move those, forward with it. You know. If you do embrace it, you get a chance to move forward. But right. you were on the cusp and that's great. So yeah. uh, our show is called Music with Purpose. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm, tr I'm looking for a foothold in or, a, or a, a, an idea on how, what's the purpose? What's the driving purpose? Uh, first was to be a songwriter. Obviously, once yeah. you've done that. Yeah, you know, for me, it's, um, uh, it boils down to communication. You know, music is just, it's a way for me to communicate. It's a form of talking for me. It's sort of how I voice opinions and ideas and how I release, you know, creativity. It's been uh, therapeutic. It's, uh, it's a great release. It's... Uh, you know, it's everything for me. I've I've seen uh, I've seen yeah. Elliot before on the stage. And he delivers. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't already, if you haven't seen television uh, and Daryl in his house, uh, mm -hmm. you got to go. Started as such a, a small concept. I was actually with him when he kind of had the idea, and we happened to be in a plane together. And he said, you know, I've got this. I, I said, what's up? What's going on? You know, what's new? He said, you know, I've got this idea that I just want to I want to do something on the internet. And I just want to have some friends over and uh, just play some music and then put it out on the internet. And it was so such a small, casual idea. And um, and we did we did the first episode and literally gave the crew in the band a camera, people that had never held a camera before. So it, you know it, it started off with just five of us in a room and. Uh, and then we had one guest, and then it kept growing and growing and growing. When did that start? What year? It's almost going on 10 years, so in between 9 and 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've lost track. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so that's an awesome experience. It seems to be for just about anyone who gets a chance. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I never thought it would turn into that. Is I get the vibe or the feeling that it... it it relates back to was it Levon Helm's place or something? Yeah, he did. He was doing something, I guess, similar. That's right. Yeah, right. but I don't think he was intentionally uh, filming it and making a production out of it. No, it was just about the experience, mm -hmm. right? And for a select few, and this was before yeah. the internet anyway. We right, uh, right. Um, I mean, even the Bettons are now <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, their their knowledge is not secret. It's it's part right. of the uh, this the the communications explosion mm -hmm. that's going on, but it's nice to see. Yeah, I, uh, I'd like to think that, uh, <coughs> well, it's the same, it yeah. is the same vibe, and that's what's, mm -hmm. what's great about it. Uh, uh, where somebody's done it before, but now you've, you've brought it to a lot more people. Yeah. Because that was only anecdotal, just a few who heard about this place. Right, right. right. Now right. you've brought, and there are probably a lot more musicians over the, over the 10 years who've, who've hit you the most, who Oh, my God. For good uh, or bad, no? no bad. Yeah, I mean, wow. You know, early on it was Smokey Robinson and The Doors and then to, you know, Rob Thomas and the Goo Goo Dolls and Train and CeeLo. Back up. The Doors. You know, I mean, it's been like... Smokey Robinson, what, that's a whole other show was, I want to I know, to yeah. Tell me about Smokey. That was early on. Um, uh, yeah, Smokey Robinson was probably in like year two of the show. And so you uh, already, by that time, you had a big draw. We were in year two, yeah. and we got Elliot Lewis, so <laughs> I can understand the feel. And no, no spoke. And yeah. no, I mean, it's almost 100 guests we've had on the show so far. Favorites of mine are like Joe Walsh and Billy Gibbons and... Oh, that you know, was it. The doors. And Cheap Trick we just had the, recently. So really that was, the yeah, yeah. The New Millennials. Mm -hmm. um, the New Millennium Doors. You, there was a singer in there that you're an, or a former neighbor of. Is that correct? And a bandmate. Let's give one shout out. Who? Millie! Oh! <laughs> Mike Matevich was oh. in the New Millennium Doors at one point. Okay. He wasn't with you then in the... No, Mike oh. joined a band that I had. I'm just telling Mike you. Matevich. Mike Steel Matevich. Steelheart, everyone. Yeah. Uh, he was 16 years old. He was a kid. I, I wasn't much older. I was probably about 18 or 19. But he was about 16, and we... Uh, one of the first bands I had, and it was certainly his first band, uh, we played together. It was short-lived, but man, he could sing. You run with big and dogs. And I'm sure he still can. <laughs> I th have you got a couple more songs in you? Absolutely. Can we yeah. break down the set and bring the guitar let's, back on? Let's do it.
Here's a little thing about, you never know what life is going to throw at you. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's sad, but I always say it's going to be an adventure. to love.
Walking down this rocky road Wondering where my life is leading Rolling on to the bitter end And finding out along the way What it takes to keep the living You should know that would be my I want you to stay, yeah. I want you to take. Thank you. This is a little concept that's been following me for a long time. The power of music, how a song can bring it back in time to the first time you ever heard it. So this is a little thing called Soundtrack. <laughs> Stay the same, hey. Like 
like the first time you ever discovered that song A four-minute trip that's so long But like a time machine taking us back A song at a time feeling love Song at a time, like the first time. 